So could Solus Plasma Edition be the best Linux OS for your laptop in 2025? Now some might actually be surprised that I'm actually looking at this distro, right? And for good reason. This isn't something I would normally use or even cover on my channel. And I'm being perfectly honest when I say that I'm not sure I would ever use this. But just go with me for a second because I do think that this distro has a lot of potential. And who knows? You might even find a home here. You might find that this fits your needs perfectly. Now, why am I making this distro? Well, one of the biggest complaints from developers that I hear is that there's too many options in Linux and that it's just kind of hard to get, get their feet wet and that they don't have enough time because they're busy doing what they do best, which is coding, right? And so, for example, they'll stick with the i3 desktop when there are so many better tiling window managers out there, right? But this was the one that they could quickly get up and going. And then they might, you know, check out like Hyperland. And Hyperland is great. Don't get me wrong. I covered it in a video up here. But there is a problem with this because there's a lot of distros that are really good for development, but they're not so good for the desktop. And there are others that are good for the desktop, but not so good for, you know, coding, so on and so forth, right? Also, I want to cover this video because maybe this will be friendly for digital creators, people who stream, people who record music, people who, you know, make videos and that sort of thing. I actually use Linux to make my video content. Maybe a distro that can install multiple desktop environments, right? And also, can you easily make build packages with this distro? These are the things that I'm going to be taking a look at right now. Now, I usually don't cover much in terms of like Wayland desktops, but today I am making the exception with Plasma 6. And I think their flagship edition is, you know, budgie desktop. It's just too tied to the GNOME desktop. And so I just have to say, I don't really feel much like covering it, at least not today. However, I did briefly take a look at it. And if you'd like me to cover it, just type budgie in the comments. I will, you're my boss, so I will certainly do it. Anyway, Solus and the budgie desktop first came on my radar in about 2015. And I actually talked with the original creator of the desktop slash distro, Ike Doherty. And I just have to say, he was such a nice person. And I have to say, I was genuinely saddened to see that he left the project a few years ago. Ike, if you do see this, I can't wait to cover Serpent OS because that looks like a monster of a project. I just have to say. And I'm not sure the name means, but it may, may or may not catch people's attention. I mean, Serpent OS. There is a big YouTube channel, Serpent Set A. So maybe? I don't know, though. Anyway, it looks like, though, from what I can see, that it could possibly be the next Arch Linux because it does have this really awesome package manager that I'm looking forward to covering on this channel. So, when I first tried Budgie in, back in the day in 2015, I was an avid Arch user, and I had no interest in using Solus at all. So I had to mix and match a lot of apps that were in the so-called budgie X top desktop with XFC4 apps because, well, the AUR just didn't have a lot of those apps that came stock with the budgie desktop. So there were mixed, there was a big mix match of, of applications between XFCE and budgie. And it was very interesting, I must say. Okay, so what most people don't know though, is that this was originally a project from the Linux from scratch project, right? It was an LFS project. And all that has changed since then because this distro has really gone places, you know, without 
further ado. Alrighty. So here we are. Plasma 6. Let's see what this says, okay? Welcome to the Solus operating system running KDE Plasma. KDE is, or Plasma is a free and open source desktop environment created by KDE. The international software community of volunteers it is designed to be simple by default for a smooth experience but a powerful win needed to help you really get things done. We hope you love it. I do love it. Plasma is designed to be simple yet usable out of the box. Things are where you'd expect, and there is genuinely no need to configure anything before you can be comfortable and productive. Below is a visual representation of the typical Plasma desktop. Move the pointer over or click on something to learn about. Plasma is an extremely feature-rich environment designed to supercharge your productivity. Here is just a smattering of things they can do for you. Overview, your system, command system, KRunner, KDE Connect, activities. Our developers use anonymous data to improve KDE, blah, 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 disabled by default, and they keep it that way because we're in DC or Cooler, a total of about 20 minutes, and they're definitely going to destroy this. Now, let's take a brief look at the documentation, shall we? I think this is probably the best thing we could do. Actually, yeah, before we do that, though, let's just take a look at what we get here, okay? So let's just take a look at all the applications because I don't really want to go through. Dolphin, that's what you'd expect. A list of music player, emoji selector, Firefox, which is good. This is something that is really promoting open source, right? Hardware drivers, uh, the Haruna. Uh, I've heard a lot of good things about Haruna. I haven't used it yet. Um, I'm really curious about it though. Um, but so I've had I've had a couple of friends who have kind of told me about this, and I just have to say I I'm really kind of impressed with this. So, um, yeah, let me know in the section below, and let's see what else. Uh, we got calculated all the KDE applications console. I expect that K write K writes a pretty good text editor, by the way. So is Kate. I actually like Kate quite a bit. All your LibreOffice stuff. Okay, Ocular. Okay, this makes a lot of sense. You have a software center. Okay. So like you you can see like there isn't there's a lot of like so like let's just take a look. Audio software. So they do have a few packages, I suppose. Like they do have Ardour 8.8, .8, which is wow. Okay, so that's kind of part of my criteria, right? Can can um, creators um, get along with this really easily? Video software. Um, they have a lot of packages here. This actually kind of surprises me, I must say, because you know when i look at distros uh, like this i always expect that there isn't going to be a lot of desktops or desktop there's not going to be a lot of packages right and i always expect that and here's why because if you actually do take a look and we're going to take a look at it together uh, we have all the codecs and stuff but anyway, if you do take a look at it, you'll find that there's a lot of developer type tools and stuff like that to run like distro boxes, podman, and that sort of thing. And so this gives me the impression that this isn't, doesn't have a lot of uh, software already, you know, able to be installed through the soft, uh, software center. But this is clearly not the case. There's a lot of stuff here. Let's see what they have for, like, say, programming and language tools. Ruby Gems. Ooh, that's interesting. Development tools. Programming. Okay. Haskell libraries. Perl modules. Python modules. 
you can install these right out of the gate. Oh, and these are real, really good modules, by the way. Things that you would actually put it in like a virtual environment. But I mean, you know, sometimes some of these are okay to run globally on your system. And I don't know, are they running these in a sandboxed environment? Like, uh, you know, using like a uh, virtual EMV or something? I don't know. Um, that's really interesting to me. Um, I would really genuinely like to know about that. Um, development files. This is interesting. Okay. Abbey Word development. Okay. This is a really good distro for developers that I can tell, right? I, I really think that. So this is the software store is very interesting to me. This is something I actually did. You know, when I took a look at Budgie, I didn't really take a look at this, but this is actually really impressive to me. And so you have all kinds of things in the actual software center you can just install at the snap of a finger, which is really awesome. It's really remarkable to me. So let's go on. Let's take a look at the... Um, Let's look at the web page. I would have expected that Firefox would open up to the Solace page. So let's just take a look at it. Okay, here we are. And let's just take a look at it. Um, really nice website. Basically, kind of tells you. Doesn't really tell you. And I was looking at this the other day. I was looking at the budgie one. I was looking at this page when I was looking at the budgie desktop and the one thing that really kind of stuck out to me and I just have to be perfectly honest is that it was just one simple fact that it wasn't very clear how to get up and get started and um, now I think I kind of understand a little bit more though uh, the second time around looking through this and looking like everything's just right out of the app store so like getting started is just pretty much pretty basic right pretty simple so anyway the one thing though that I did notice that did kind of bug me and I'm just going to be perfectly honest is I had to literally google Package Manager for Solus to find out um, about package management. And this is a little disconcerting to me because I just have to say, like, I really want to know how to, like, get up and go. And, like, it wasn't, like, right on the front page or it wasn't, like, in one of these tabs up here. I would have expected that but that's not how it worked and uh, so if somebody could um, you know like maybe work on that a little bit because I mean honestly because that to me would be very confusing to me if I'm a new user and I'm just gonna say that um, and this is kind of geared towards new users especially developers and yeah, I'm sure that they can Google things and that sort of thing. And so that doesn't surprise me too much, but that is one thing that really kind of surprised me. I did show a few uh, developer tools and stuff, but there are a few other things that I did want to kind of show you and bring to your attention. Okay, so we have a few things here that I think are really interesting. Here's the Budgie desktop, the Plasma. They have the GNOME desktop. That's the worst desktop ever. So if you want to know why, just fix that video. Anyway, uh, Mate. Mate is pretty good. The only th My only complaint about Mate is like everything in my desktop files ends up on the screen and I've never been able to figure out kind of like this on the XFCE version, right? I've never been able to figure out how to remove it. And uh, these are the desktop uh, editions um, and they have a couple others, I think, if I remember right. 
Um, I won't take a look here. Uh, but anyway, um, pretty interesting stuff. These are all good desktops, as far as I'm concerned, except for the GNOME desktop. And I, I will be honest, the GNOME desktop, I give it a lot of hate and everything. Um, it It isn't as bad as everybody says. Here's some compatibility stuff. Like, uh, I'm kind of interested. MSI. Okay, so they tell you which desktops are kind of compatible right out of the box kind of thing. That's pretty cool. Um, and what uh, Wi-Fi chips are uh, compatible out of the out of the gate. Uh, Android. Uh, so you can install Android tools. Uh, basics to package management, that sort of thing. Software uh, development, command line. So it basically lists a lot of like uh, a lot of things that you know are available. So like the camera, you get Droid Cam, for example. And I think actually this uh, website is a little dated, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, there's a lot of really good information here to get you up and, you know, get you started. The boot manager and stuff. How do you do things here? How do you get, like, your NVIDIA card up and going? And, ooh, this is good here. This is actually something that I could use. Um, I'm still trying to figure out how to get that up and going on Fedora. So this is actually, would probably be pretty helpful. I don't think it will mix well with, like, X desktops, and this is probably the biggest thing of why I wouldn't use it, because, as you can see, I, I love tiling window managers, so that might be a deal breaker for me. Um, they have a page on here, and I saw it the other day, of basically showing you how you can use Podman on this very easily. And I mean, it was really easy. So the main point that I wanted to get across here is that you can install Podman, you can install a lot of different things, and you can get up and going. And, you know, like, even if there wasn't a package, which I highly doubt, because I can see there's a lot of packages. There's, there's almost... I mean, I would say this probably rivals the AUR. Um, it's pretty incredible. I, I was actually genuinely just very surprised. I was shocked how many packages there were. But just in case there wasn't, you could set up a Podman instance, a distro box. You could run like sandbox environments like app images, flat packs, and snap packs, right? So you do have a lot of options here. Uh, to, you know, basically installing your favorite software, uh, configuring your environment the way you want, exactly the way you want, tailoring it. It looks like this is a super stable distro, as far as I can tell. Like, I'm taking a look at it. This thing is just firing on all cylinders. And this is a Wayland desktop, okay? So, I'm really impressed with this. Um, just across the board this is this makes a whole lot of sense i could see why someone would like this distro right oh let's uh let's do something okay let's just see um let's just see how how well this package manager works i expect this thing to work on all cylinders like i said i expect everything to work really well so Mm, let's let's now I know that um I just want to see it compile. I don't I'm not going to run the software here. Let me stretch. I want to see. This is actually a pretty big program, so let's just install it. I'm not gonna run it on here, that would be crazy.
and there you are you're installed dude seriously pac-man doesn't install hardware this fast not even half this fast this is a pretty incredible you know package manager definitely some big props here uh, I would argue this might be a better package manager than Pac-Man, if I'm being perfectly honest. Pac-Man used to be my favorite package manager, but this is pretty incredible, I have to say. I am going to take a further look at the uh, Solus desktop in the future. I'm going to see how this runs on real hardware, because... You know, maybe I may not run the Plasma Edition on my laptop, but I have to say, just based on what I'm seeing, like, this is even better. If I'm being perfectly honest, this is even better than what I'm using right now, which is Fedora. I don't have an excuse why I'm not using this. I, I have to be really honest. Um, now I've told a lot of people that I, I'm planning on using Nix OS in the future, but I want you all to see this, okay, and hear this straight from me, from this, I was not expecting to be this impressed. I am just so impressed with this distro that I'm just going off script because I don't know what to say. And I don't often say this there is a lot of respect here even more than i was prepared to give like probably 10 times what i was prepared to give this distro people should take a look at it because this should be the next arch linux or nix os or something there's something about this distro that i really like and i really resonate with could i live in this I don't know why I'm not. And that's the bottom line. What do you think about this distro? Is it livable? Um, do you foresee any challenges or something if you were to live in this distro? Anyway, I'm going to be checking out AntiX next. Hold on for that video because I think that distro is a very interesting project that I think everyone needs to know about. Anyway. I'm also thinking about doing a video on Alma Linux because you know, we definitely need like a free and open source version of Red Hat. What do you think? And did I miss anything? Am I missing something here or something that you would like me to cover? Just drop me a comment down below. Peace, everyone.